As the summer comes to an end, I cannot tell you what a relief it is to have finally completed my chemotherapy treatment. The last nine months have been incredibly tough for us as a family. Life as you know it can change in an instant. Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us here today. I decided yesterday not to comment on the short film release updating us on the status of Princess of Wales, Catherine Middleton's cancer. My first thoughts were about the production value, how high it was, glossy, slick, and I thought this must be really expensive. And how great everyone looked, which is a good thing, with the exception perhaps of Prince William, that sometimes seemed forced to be there. But I am no expert in body language. I'm just a human with human intuition, so I might be reading it all wrong. I thought a lot about my mother yesterday. As her battle with cancer, how it affected her body, our mind, our family. And it has changed us forever. By the grace of God and a good public health care, she is now cancer free. So, as I reflected on my family's journey with cancer, my opinion started to change. And I thought, maybe I should pen down how what I'm feeling. So with all due respect, I say the following. The Princess of Wales' latest cinematic foray into royal health updates. One can't help but marvel at the sheer Hollywood-esque production value of it all. It's as if the House of Windsor has decided to pivot from monarchy to movie making with Kate Milton as their leading lady in a glossy short film that would make even Steven Spielberg raise an eyebrow. Now, please don't get me wrong. It's a relief to hear that Her Royal Highness has completed her chemotherapy treatment. Cancer is a formidable foe, and no one, be they commoner or royal, should have to face it. But one can't help but wonder if this polished production missed the mark on connecting with the very people it aimed to inspire. Here we have a princess shielded in the lush splendor of her Northville estate telling us about the trials and tribulations of her cancer journey. Meanwhile, the average Brit is grappling with the NHS waiting list longer than the queue for the last bus home on a Saturday night. It's a bit like being invited to a caviar tasting when you're struggling to put beans on toast. The video with its soft focus and picturesque perfect family moments feels more like a royal recruitment ad than a genuine connection with those facing similar health challenges. Where are the scenes of Kate in a crowded NHS waiting room? Or perhaps a glimpse of her grappling with the side effects of chemo in a less than glamorous light? Alas, such gritty realism seems to have been left on the cutting floor. And let's not forget that the timing of all of this and how we've arrived here has been odd. There's so many things that still we have no official answers to that the so-called journalists or the royal reporters will never touch 
I will never disclose or say if they do know the truth. You know, it all at times seems almost less about a health update and more about an image rehabilitation. It's as if the palace PR machine decided to fight fire with, well, high definition video and impeccable lighting. The contrast between this slickly produced video and the reality faced by many cancer patients in the UK is stark. While Kate speaks of her journey, many are navigating the stormy waters of underfunded cancer services and staff shortages in the NHS. According to recent reports, cancer waiting times in the UK have reached record highs, with some patients waiting months for treatment to begin. It's a far cry from the serene Norfolk setting we see in this video. But perhaps the most glaring omission in this Royal Health update is the lack of concrete action. Here was an opportunity for the future queen to use her platform to advocate for better cancer care for all, to shine a light on the struggles, on those struggling faces by ordinary citizens dealing with the same diagnosis. Instead, we got platitudes and picturesque family scenes. Please don't misunderstand me. Please. It's wonderful that Kate has completed her treatment and is on the path to recovery. No one would wish ill health on another. At least I wouldn't and I don't. Royal or otherwise. But this video with its high production values and carefully curated imagery feels like a missed opportunity to truly connect with and advocate for the people she will one day serve as queen. In the end, this glossy update leaves us with more questions than answers. It's a reminder that even in times of personal struggle, the gap between the royals and the rest remains as wide as ever. One can't help but wonder if, in the quest to appear relatable, they've only succeeded in highlighting just how unrelatable they truly are. So, Here's to Kate's recovery and to hoping that next time the palace might consider swapping the Hollywood production for a bit more NHS reality. After all, isn't that what true leadership and empathy is all about? The grand theater of royal drama unfolds once again with all the subtlety of a bull in a china shop. As the Princess of Wales emerges from her medical odyssey, one can almost hear the collective spooning of royal watchers and the frantic scribbling of heriographers preparing to elevate Catherine to sainthood. But wait. What's this? A disturbance in the carefully choreographed narrative of royal resilience. It seems that Netflix, that purveyor of binge-worthy content, has had the audacity to release promotional materials for a series on polo. Of all things. And who should be associated with this equestrian extravaganza but the 
prodigal prince himself, Prince Harry, and his production company, Archwell. Cue the predictable outrage. Never mind that Netflix, being a business and not a arm of the royal household, makes its own scheduling decisions. Never mind that other shows and movies were promoted alongside this Polo Alonza. No, 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 no. This must be calculated. It's a calculated move, a pathetic, disgusting move by Harry and Meghan to steal the limelight from Catherine moment of triumph. Because clearly, that's how the entertainment industry works. At the beck and call of, what did they call them? The exile royals. That's what you call them. Exile royals. Wow, the power that they must have then as exile royals. I think you folks need to look up the word exile, what it really means. The irony is thick enough that it almost resembles jam. Strawberry, anyone? Or maybe raspberry? Cast your mind back to when Megan shared her experience of having a miscarriage. Where were the palace pigeons then? Cooing message of support, where were they? Where were the messages of sympathy, of empathy? Where were the royal reporters, those arbiters of decorum offering sympathy? Ah, oh, but that was different, wasn't it? It's an American actress daring to speak about women's health. How dare she? How gauche? How Hollywood? Did, did they not say they wanted privacy? Did they not leave because they wanted privacy how is, is isn't this isn't this contradictory in not so many words said uh camilla tamatamahili you know i keep thinking there is such admiration for the british educational system but i really think we need to reevaluate it because there's a lot of stupid people in a lot of high places and in communications of all. <laughs> like, it, the, the, the irony does not... Oh, you folks get it, right? You get it. Like, these are people who are educated. They're in communication. And they still can't under... Yeah... I, I'm not going to even try. Now, as Catherine bravely shared her journey, the same voices that marked Megan's openness demand that Harry and Megan <gasps> give up everything of themselves to perhaps before an altar of royal protocol that doesn't exist and hide themselves away and say nothing, not continue with their lives, not live their existence until St. Catherine says so. Never mind that they are private citizens an ocean away. Never mind that the royal family has shown them all the warmth 
of a February day in Balmora. No, they must emerge from their California exile. Star cloth and ashes in hand to pay homage to the narrative of royal unity. In this pantomime of public emotion, one almost forgets that these are real people with real feelings. But why let humanity get in the way of a good tabloid story or some deranged on television or on YouTube platform? After all, in this grand circus of royal watching, it's far easier to cast heroes and villains than to acknowledge the messy, complicated truth of family dynamics. So, as we brace ourselves for the inevitable canonization of Catherine the Saint and the simultaneous de de demonization, I'm not saying that word correctly because I can't say it, of Harry and Meghan, I would suggest we pause to consider the absurdity of it all. In a world grappling with war, climate change, and economic upheaval, we find ourselves fixated on the timing of a polo documentary. Truly, we are living in an age of wonder. Do we? I ask. Well, this is some kind of transition, I guess. Um, last week, we had the pleasure and honor to welcome a new member to the court. And um, the House of Burke is now part of the Majesty Sussex Court. The court was also treated to an original song, world premiere original song written in their honor. And it was a good time welcoming the House of Burke to the members court. I take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you very much for your support, your continued support for your counsel and for all that you do. For my wonderful subscribers, thank you for being here. Thank you for the likes and the comments and everything else that helps keep this channel still going and for it to find its way into spaces that perhaps there's like-minded others that may want to join. So thank you. I'll do a quick scroll here of the comments for the last little while. So to Connie, Alice, T Mac, uh, HJ said, Suzy Q, Hugh, Angela, Shirley, Joyce Anderson, Reba Henderson, Mrs. Clutch Sussex, SC, Beverly Hardly, um, Hardy, uh, Lydia Washington. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for all, everyone, everyone who shows up, um, watches the videos, uh, comments or click on the thumb up <laughs> like button uh sorry no, it's not a button it's more like a 
emoji kind of thing, I thank you. It all counts and it all it all helps in one way or another. And to Maggie and to Adrian Rodney, um, to Hawkeye Helen, to Mrs. Clutch Sussex, to Ernell, Marcia Williams, Cotian Paris, Black Light, uh, Mimi, Jun Garcia, uh, Sharon A. Smith, Dorothy, Joy Anderson, Susie Q, Angela. I'm going to say the Spanish word, Angela Simons. <laughs> Angela, Prudence, uh, Reba Henderson, Nelly, Diana, Hugh, Essie, Helen, Ondara, Matilda, Cheryl, Connie, <laughs> Deborah, Deborah Chambers, uh, Spidey, Luvertha, Sharon McDaniel, <laughs> Jocelyn. Oh, sure, sure, sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. And um, for those of you who show up and you listen and you, you watch um, and you don't click like or anything, you're the silent type. Click like for me, please, uh, <laughs> because it does help. And um, it stays anonymous. Like, I don't know who, who clicks likes, right? So because I know there's more people actually watching than people who actually click on the like button. So do 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 this this person here a, a big a little favor while you, while you're listening I mean just press that little thing little thumbs up that's it that's all I ask and everyone else well not, not everyone else everyone in general thank you thank you for your patience thank you for your love I return it right back to you thank you for everything you do for this channel and um Thank you for your continued support. I appreciate it. The bottom of my heart. Why am I getting emotional? All right. I'm going to say adieu. Goodbye. Your Merci. Au revoir. Prayer for healing. Dear God, I come before you in humility, recognizing your infinite love and boundless power. You are the source of all healing and restoration, and I turn to you in this moment of need. Lord, I lift up my own body and spirit to you. You know the innermost depths of my being, including the areas that need healing, whether they be physical, emotional, or spiritual. I place my trust in your divine wisdom and mercy. Please, Father, lay your healing hand upon me. Touch the places that are hurting, whether visible or hidden. Pour out your healing grace upon me, that I may experience your restoring power and comfort. Lord, you have promised in your word that you are the God who heals us. I cling to this promise today and ask for your healing to flow through every fiber of my being. Father, heal not only my body, but also my spirit. Bring peace to my troubled heart, calm my anxious thoughts, and grant me resilience to face each day with hope and faith. May your healing presence surround me, Father, and may I experience your love and grace in profound ways. As I journey towards wholeness, I trust that your will is perfect and your timing divine. Thank you, Father, for your constant love and care and for hearing my prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A powerful...